5G is not only an additional expense for telcos, it's also going to be very demanding on resources and will no doubt pose a number of operational challenges. Marcus, you and I have been talking about the introduction of 5G for a number of years now. Um, where does 5G fit into Swisscom's overall network strategy? Yeah, there are several, several topics in, in, in 5G. First, it's just an, uh, an evolution of the current network towards more bandwidth, that sort of a traditional way of doing things. Plus, then we naturally attract more other businesses, more the enterprise type of businesses, IoT, reliability, and so on. And we sort of tackle also the convergence between IT and, and networking. So that's sort of another use case, or sort of coming along with this going more business. Well, we, we hear a lot about um, industry use cases and, and vertical markets being, a, being a, a new key area and how 5G will enable this for operators. Have you done any in, initial work on, on identifying which ones are likely to be the, maybe the, the first and earliest wins? Yeah, so we have done a, a first use case implementation with an industry 4.0 type of use case. It's a, a plant for manufacturing plant. There are several sub use cases in, in, in that. So from uh, augmented reality to check what's going on to virtualization of machine IT to checking that there is things going right or wrong through video and fast reaction times. And you need a certain slicing for separation and isolation of that customer's uh, uh, network from our public network. So how far away are we from implementation? What, what, what do you still need to achieve within your network in order to then create these slices that you can offer to customers? So, I mean, we plan to deploy uh, 5G towards the end of this year. So, in that sense, we are very aggressive. The slicing, there are different aspects of slicing, whether you go for a slice for more reliability, for more QoS, whatever it takes. So, it's not completely clear what our first implementation is going to look like. Now, we are seeing, a, one of the main trends we're seeing in the telecoms industry is, is telcos stepping up to take more of a, a leadership position in, in how network architectures will e evolve. Um, are, you, are you seeing the same? Are you contributing at Swisscom to this? Or is, or is it the, really the preserve of, of, the, of the bigger, more global telcos? Yeah, I mean, we, we to a certain degree, yes. But, I mean, as a small operator, we rely on, on our preferred partners to, to help us a lot with, with all that movements and changes in the industry as well. So is, is integration of 5G one of the, the most important aspects for you? Rather than getting into specific technology, it's the integration factor, integrating with existing legacy networks. Yeah, it's part is integration. The other part is really sort of implementing some use cases. And also with our customers, it's sort of a, a, a cooperation in that sense, or a collaboration to get certain use cases up and running in a partnership with our customers. As we do it with our vendors, try to set up the network as a partnership. And, and how, how is the, uh, the growth in open networking, open source software and hardware, how is that impacting the decisions that you make for your network? So, I mean, we already today use a lot of uh, open source software bought from big vendors. So it's not like from truck, uh, but it's uh, a, a trend which is ongoing. I've not seen too much in the hardcore mobile radio space yet. Sort of, there are certain movements, but I don't see too much yet where in the fixed line there is much more going on towards uh, open networking uh, uh, space or using open source. And we've talked in the past about the, the, the key technology um, milestones that need to be implemented, NFV um, going on for five, six years now, and, and, and SDN. Um, are, you, are you comfortable with the progress that you've made in your network to get the right pieces in place for your launch later this year? Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> We will, we will see towards the end of the year. But I mean, NFV is a, is a, is a very important piece of the puzzle. Uh, we would like to see NFV sort of evolving towards a more, more cloudification, cloud native version of it. Specifically go to B2B services and markets 
it's not about uh, virtualization anymore, but it's about cloudification, having third-party applications, and have automation through the cloudification as well. Do you see the industry as, as widening now? And do you, do you see the existing alliances and, and groups that we have in the industry, uh, not fit for purpose, but um, are, are we seeing new relationships? Because we talked about the vertical industries and, and they've all got their own needs and their own standards, bodies and groups. Do we need to bring more of these together? Yeah, I would love to see that this industry come closer together. I don't really see that happening on a industry association level, but where I'm coming from, but I, I see it more in a peer-to-peer -peer relation, like a telecom operator with a particular customer or with particular set of customers from a one industry. So just to recap on that, because we're here at 5G World, um, the plan is to have a service up and running later this year and then keep evolving and, and keep building on what you've got and integrating and evolving your, your LTE assets as well. Yes. It's, it's sort of an add-on at the moment, and sort of the, it's a natural evolution, and there's not everything is set uh, at this point in time. And that's that. It. It's a lot of it comes with collaboration, with adding new 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 use cases or new business cases. That will take its time, and we believe. I mean, setting up the network first allows a lot of innovation as well coming along about applications we never thought of. Sure. Well, hopefully uh, in the year's time we'll, uh, we'll meet again and we'll, we'll look back at what some of these uh, new innovations have actually proved and, and produced. But for now, Marcus, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.